That is a lot of parts. All right, so got my new block. All brand new, pretty looking. I went ahead and cleaned all my parts that I will be reusing and reconditioned the oil pump, took it all apart, cleaned it all up, oiled it, and put it back together. Uh, there is a buttload of sludge and carbon. And I took care of this engine. I, I changed the oil every three to 5,000, recommends 5,000. We had it done completely <clears throat> through the Ford Care. Uh, through the first 100,000 miles of its life, and <clears throat> at 114,000, she died. So, and I'm actually going to do a recap overview of this whole thing at the end, because there actually is quite a story that goes with this that hopefully you don't have to deal with the same exact problems that we had to, but okay, maybe you did. Okay, so here we go. We're gonna start by getting our front seal put back in. I uh, got the new seal right here. Part number right here. Got a BE8Z6700B. Always do this on wood, because this is aluminum. Try not to damage the surfaces. Sure, we're completely flush and even all the way around. There we go. So that's done. Uh, I went ahead and prepped all my surfaces. Got them all cleaned up. <clears throat> this stuff works pretty good. You can probably just use any citrus remover. It's what it smells like to me. Um, I just, when I bought all the parts, I just told them I need everything on the TSB. This is a Motorcraft silicone gasket remover. And then super scrapers, be, please be extremely careful when using these on aluminum. You can take a lot of material off. Our first gasket surface here, this is for uh, the oil pump on the front of the engine. Uh, here's the part number for the gasket on it, BM5Z6659-B. Yeah. about like that lubrication not directly on the seal just on the light coat on the shaft and nothing excessive almost kind of wipe that off you know because usually front and rear seals go on dry make sure your new flip seal has a spring in there I'm not going to force it into place. I'm going to just put the pick right next to it and work it around. Put this pick on the side here. Slight down pressure. Work the seal all the way around. Oops. Don't poke it. Just right, right, right next to it. There we go. We are all the way on as far as that's concerned. Make sure our gasket lines up. Dowels line up. There we go. So right here, my <clears throat> mic died. But what I'm trying to show is uh, using the impact driver, but put it on the setting that just runs it in to where it has resistance and stops. And then you're going to turn around and use uh, a hand ratchet to run it the rest of the way in and uh, torque to the manufacturer's spec. Um, and then just to recall, uh, all the bolts on here, there is uh, three short, three long, and then three that are a different color. They're actually black. Um, oh, actually, I'm sorry. I think it's two long, uh, three short and three that are a different color. 
right here. Got the block flipped over. I'm gonna go ahead and grab the, uh, I call it a windage tray, but kind of oil baffle. And it can only go on one way. You can see when you put it on backwards, it even looks wrong, but uh, get it lined up with the correct bolt holes. And then you're gonna have to get your oil sump uh, put in with the new O-ring. All right, ran into my first issue with this new block. So I have marked all my bolts. I know where they go. Now this is what the uh, windage tray or uh, oil separator tray, whatever you want to call it. That's what these bolts look like. There's seven of them. Two, four, six, seven. They're all the same. The problem is if you go in these areas, these bolts fit fine. If you go here, that's bottomed out. So what I ended up having to do, you can see that they are physically focus is bottomed out. It doesn't go any further. So what I ended up doing is taking a quarter band, cutting it shorter, and then use a little wheel to polish it. So that way these can go down and bottom out where they're supposed to. So I can make the oil separator windage tray go down. So yeah, that's, uh, nobody mentions that. And it's really funny if you go to some of these other videos, uh, especially ones with uh, uh, quicker time lapses, you'll notice that they'll put the bolts in and then there's a jump cut, and you'll notice the bolts look slightly different. Uh, and that's because my guess is, is they came across this issue and just hadn't said anything. But it's a pretty minor setback. Just cut them down a little bit, polish them up, make sure they hand thread in there. Uh, what my guess is, is when they machine the block, they machine the block for the understanding of that depth and nothing else. So anyways... Not a huge deal. Let's go ahead and get these ran down. Don't forget, don't forget your O-ring replacement there. Make sure you get this all wiped off and everything cleaned up. Alrighty, so next part here, we're getting to put on the rear main. Oops, rear main. It already has the gasket uh, embedded in it. You don't really need to do anything and there is gasket material here that goes against the pan um, from what I understand you don't need to put any RTV here but you do want to bring it up and over and semi overlap but anyways uh, when you get ready to do this there's a little white spacer here and it will tell you that air side installation facing away from engine that way when you get ready this will align it This will align it and then you can just basically push it on and over and it won't roll the seal. So right here we're looking at the base of that rear main and you can see how it squishes up a little bit and that will push up and press against the pan once you install the pan. Um, you do want to make sure you get a little bit of overlap of your RTV <clears throat> which I'm going to show you here in a minute. Get a little bit of RTV over that edge that way you don't have any room for gaps or leaks. So right here, I'm using the Motocraft uh, RTV sealant they recommend through the TSB. Again, I just got it because it's on the TSB and they supplied it when I ordered all the parts. Um, it's the same as Right Stuff. You can use Right Stuff or Honda Bond or anything like that. It'll be the same. Um, but one of the things I like to do on this is I will uh, go around the inner edge. That way you seal the bolts away from everything. But I will go back and go around the backside of the bolt. I have had the gasket sealant fail uh, right about where the bolt is and it seeps in and around the bolt hole. And so I like to give uh, a little bit extra possibility of sealing it out and go completely around the bolt hole. So at this point, you're officially done with the bottom side. Let's take a bolt or two in there to kind of align the pan. And that way you're not smeared all over the place and drop the pan on there. 
drop the rest of your little bolts in and then run them around and then torque them to factory spec. I would not call this a mission critical bolt. So uh, German tight's good enough, guten tight. And uh, yeah, just run them in a little bit. I mean, it's a small bolt, so you don't need to put ungodly amounts of force on it, but run them in tight so they don't fall out. They're gonna have sealing around them. 